It's very scary operating on your wife, because if it goes wrong, you take home your complication. You know, I've heard that joke about a family. <laughs> It's a good one, though, isn't it? If you couldn't be a surgeon, you know what I'd be? Yeah, you'd be a freaking stand-up comedian is what you'd be. That was the toughest case I've ever done. Cool. Lives of your children. Uh, Do you I? pass gas in the OR? Yes. Thank you. I'm Dr. Paul Massif. And I'm Dr. Terry Dubrow. And this is our ET retrospective. This is a walk down memory lane. Take a look at me. Anything different? Gained weight. God, look at my oh hair. Oh, my God. Look at the way I look. You were so Maybe younger, young and chubby. I was chubby. That's when they allowed you to swim in the ocean. Now you've had too much plastic surgery, oh, so the God. dolphins will choke on you, so they don't put you in the ocean anymore. You know, I've heard that joke about a family. <laughs> family. It's, it's a good family. one, though, isn't it? So yeah. this was a wild idea that Paul actually came up with. We're having dinner, you know, the executive producers, um, and we were having dinner here in Hollywood, and I go, it's time to make another doctor show. By then, we were specialists in revisional surgery, so that was the genesis was for the, the genesis. idea. I said, why don't we just take some patients that have had really bad plastic surgery? So I call him. We're having dinner. I go, what do you think of this idea? That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Plus, was, he was sick. He had the flu at that point. It was a dumb, he dumb He goes, you're going to show all of our mistakes and all these complications on Right. If on every TV, other he doctor... Goes, and I go, yeah. Yeah, these are unfixable cases that no doctors can fix, and you want us to try to do it on national television. Not the greatest thing for the reputation. So, of course, the next day he goes, all right, let's try it. I want to be perfect. We never thought we'd be here eight seasons later. But that's one of the biggest things is one, the opportunity that we've had, yeah. how lucky we are to help people that never thought they could be helped. I'm glamorous, I'm fabulous, but I need the rest of me to come into alignment with it. Ah, Tiffany, yeah. That's Last thing we want to do is have a major complication on a giant reality star. You know, as a surgeon, I'm having a bit of an oh crap moment. It's not happening today. There's not gonna be enough time to do a good job on both the breasts and the nose. Too much surgery. Safety first, that's the problem with plastic surgery these days. Surgeons will continue on and go past eight, nine, 10, 11 hours, and that's when it gets really risky. You know, the other <laughs> thing that's interesting, now if we had that same case, we're we'll be doing it because we'd be doing it probably about 35 to 40% less time. The biggest mm. challenge working together in the OR, honestly, is, and I'm not kidding about this, he passes gas yeah, in the OR. It's not true. And he thinks it's okay. It's not true. By the way, it is true. It's not. By the way, it is true. I only did that oh, once on purpose oh, in oh, front of you just to oh, see what you would do. Hold, hold on a second. You know. Hold on a second. Okay, go Lives ahead, of your second. children. Uh, do you I? pass gas in the OR? Yes. Thank you. Hold on. <laughs> Every doctor you, is going to do that. Every I, surgeon. Oh, really? Hold on. You're talking to the guy oh, who really? in the middle of the night. Passing gas in the OR is when acceptable. When he's in bed with his wife and he has to pass gas, guess what he does? I will he go to the bathroom. He gets up, he wakes up and gets up and goes to the bathroom. Who does that? Hi, Anya. Hi, sorry, I have to go. Come. Ladies and gentlemen, you, Heather should, bro. You should keep her in. My Anya. Mm, oh, look at those Hi, shoes. Hi, cutie. How are you guys? Good, good. we're good. You guys look here. Can I take a what? picture of you? All right, smile, guys. All right, but now look normal, please. Okay. So cute! Love you. All right, I gotta go. How many implants do you have total? I think I have 25 implants now. Oh, it's Justin. Yeah. The human Ken doll. He's like a Ken doll who's designed himself. He's actually really quite brilliant and talented. He's really an expert at this, and I've used him over the seasons to help me design implants. This guy is really knows what he's talking about. He's had complications. He's had complications. I mean, you could easily look at him through the lens of he's gone too far, but he's very happy. He has had complications, but very few, despite how many procedures he's had done on himself. I want to remove my nipples and my belly button. Here's the problem with a case like this. He's going to have his nipples removed. And if he can't find a real surgeon to do it, he's going to go to some back alley body modification place and do it under non-sterile conditions by an untrained individual. You almost want to do it for him, but there's a line that we don't cross. And uh, he unfortunately wanted us to cross that line. It's too unpredictable, at least in this country. I get a lot of people wanting the bigger buttock projections, the sort of Kardashian effect. Uh, I get that a lot. I don't do that operation because it's the most fatal procedure in plastic surgery, the Brazilian butt lift, but I get that with the body quite frequently. I actually watch someone die 
Yeah. Um, I mean, this actually, I walked in after the procedure and they had a pulmonary embolism. It's called fat going into a vein that went through the heart to the lung and actually they died within about eight minutes. So I'm, this, I have a little PTSD for me. There's several cases I wish I could have done. In fact, there was one that we turned down. Yeah, I remember her. And then we thought about it for a season and a half and then had an epiphany and we actually took her on, Raji. To get my face done first. What did she inject first? Well, concrete, cement. Raji, who had all this material placed in her face from plumbing supply stores, nobody would touch her. And then we sort of figured out how to remove it using orthopedic tools. And it was very successful, but very high risk. That was the toughest case I've ever done. Yeah, every surgeon on the planet turned her down because it was considered absolutely not only unfixable, but potentially extraordinarily dangerous. How are you? I'm doing well, good nice to, to see you. you. That was sort of one of the most rewarding cases I've ever done. Uh, I'm getting nauseated. Oh my God, you like that, you're sick. Look at this, look at I this. I had a sit down I was getting dizzy. Look at this, There's something weirdly enjoyable about having needles injected in your face. But by the way, I oh had way God. too much injected after that, and I looked pretty weird yeah, for a long like a time. So I was like a cautionary tale walking around myself. Don't do what I've done. The Make doctor me. botched himself. The I botched, botched, doctor botched, botched by himself. the botched doctor. You know. Yeah, that happened to me. I'm Heather Dubrow. I'm Terry's wife. What are you doing here? Oh, it's my beautiful wife. Oh, look how gorgeous my wife is. Boy, my wife does not age. You might even say you've botched it. It's very scary operating on your wife because if it goes wrong, you take home your complication. I don't like operating on friends or family, but if they have a uniquely difficult problem that I have a special experience in, I feel it's my responsibility to do it. But if it's routine and it's straightforward on my family, I'd really rather not do it. Complications happen in plastic surgery, even to the best, most experienced surgeons. If you have a complication in your family or your friends, it's devastating to your relationship. Yeah, I'm on the opposite spectrum. I, I do want to operate on my friends and family. No matter what I they feel, want? Well, no, if it's something, you know, realistic and uh, something I can do a great job on. You want to do a face on your friends? Yeah, I do it all the time. What if they hate it? Yeah, what if they well, hate it? Well, then you got a problem. But the point is, I do. I'd rather do a facelift on my friend yeah, but a face than somebody else. It's going to be something about my daddy, isn't it? Let's see. My daddy knows more than Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I am the luckiest guy. Listen, second time around. I mean, I got three wonderful boys. Um, I am married to Brittany. I'm the luckiest guy. Uh, the most incredible wife, most incredible boys. And now, what charisma. But this girl is so beautiful and wonderful and makes me laugh. And at the age, yes, I'm going to say it. Uh, uh, I have a younger wife and I'm 61 with a almost three year old baby daughter. You know, how does that feel? People ask me, all, what is that, crazy? I mean, I, you love, I it. love it. You love it. You it know? has actually made me want to live a lot longer. Yeah. Oh, God. The most requested celeb body part Terry and Paul get asked to do? Kylie Jenner's lips. And season eight, airing Thursdays on E, is filled with over 50 transformations, including one that might be their toughest yet. You did some genius work, and this season, yeah. I think he did the case of the series. Not just of the season, but of the entire series. It's a woman who has a big, giant, growing tumor on her face that nobody would touch. He took it on and it's wow, so congratulations. Thank that. you. Bro. I might as well kind of toot my own horn. Woo -hoo. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm really scared. I'm like in shock. I think the most rewarding part of being surgeons on box is the ability to fix the unfixable and to take people from hopeless and sad and not part of normal society and allow them to be normal again. Will you be my hero? This is my life's calling. This is what we'll be known for. This is our legacy. And we are truly blessed and grateful to have this opportunity. And I hope we get to continue to do it a lot more because people need it out there. No matter what everyone says about you, you're Thank not you. that stupid. Now, it's good to be good looking and kind of smart. Okay, now you lost me. So, I mean, looking at this, we've never done this before. Never looked back at all those seasons. So this is the first time we've ever done that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you, E.T., that was great.
It was really enjoyable. We, we love E.T. We love E.T. Who doesn't love E.T.?